you, you do realize that you know that you know when you're a kid and you wonder if I ever died, and maybe it's just me. Probably is just me. <laughs> if you died, who'd come to your funeral? I kind of found out. You know, I mean, the the amount of love coming at me from the moment that I posted what I posted, which is trying to have a little bit of control over it. I was paparazzi coming. I mean, God, slow news day or what? You know, somebody paid somebody and they got pictures of me walk, walking out of a hospital, which is crazy in itself. But here's the story, and I'll give you the story, and then you can ask me anything. Please, I love please. It. So where were you? No, 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 no. All right, no, no. Yeah, it's, all right it's, you it's, go. It's a story because it's got parts of it that nobody knows, and this is why I wanted to tell you. So I'm all excited to tell you. Okay. So um, I had, like, some sort of ingrown hair somewhere on the left side of my belly, and like the typical boy, I left it for about 18 months until it turned into this atrocious looking um, half dollar of nastiness. And I was, oh, it'll get better. And it didn't get better. I went to see an incredible surgeon in Encino, wonderful guy called Biederman. I love him. He's brilliant. He's Biederman. Little. Biederman. He's little. He's annoying. And he's just like, that's disgusting. You know, he's uh, one of those guys. Right. So I go see him and he goes, yeah, you got skin cancer, dude. You you have squamous cell carcinoma. I, I, three choices. I can um, I can biopsy it and send it in, spend a couple of weeks talking about it. And so I can get you an MRI or we could cut the, you, can I swear? Yeah. Yeah. You can cut the fucker out. I was like, let's I did cut that. the fucker out. I had a skin cancer they cut out. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was stupid. It was me being stupid. So I had this wonderful surgery. This guy's great, incredible nurses, blah, blah, blah. And he leaves an eight inch Frankenstein scar on the side of my back. Let me see it. I know it's not there. This is, hold on. All the right, story's worth right, hearing. All right. So I got this massive, like, ladder looking scar, and half my belly's missing. And I was carrying a bit of weight. I've always carried a bit of weight. I've always been the, you know, the cool character actor with a bit of a belly or whatever. I was wondering, you know, I sort of gave up on the idea of being skinny, which I was always skinny when I was younger. I'm a drummer, fit. But, man, I couldn't lose the weight. I could never lose the weight. I just, it, it sort of was bugging me that, you know, I didn't fit in my suits anymore. I didn't do that stuff. And it's, it's a, you know, we talk about anxiety and we talk about depression. And I just sort of lumped in with, well, you know, I'm not going to be the skinny guy. So, you know, I'm just going to be a bit chunky. And I kind of hated it. And I kind of hate the way I look. And I kind of hated the way, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm pushing 60 now. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's my lot. You know, my kid's got a 10 pack and he's fit and he looks like a model and whatever. And I'm like, yeah, great, wonderful. I used to be skinny. And it was, it's actually a really weird thing for your psyche. So I got this scar and I went back to beat him and I said, dude, you butchered me. And he's like, I saved your life, asshole. And I'm like, if I went to a plastic surgeon that I know and I had a tummy tuck, what do you think? And he goes, hate to tell you this, but it's a really good idea. He can take out more skin than I can. It would take you out of the watch and wait scenario where you have to wait and see whether it right. comes back or whatever. And he goes, I never usually advocate this stuff. He said, go do it. Who are you going to go to? So I told him I was going to go to. He's this good guy. He's a, he's a you know, thoracic surgeon as well. And he's the guy you want to go to and you know, it's seen as if part of he's missing. Right. You know? He's just an amazing guy. Bill's mastectomy breast. He's Dr. J is his name. He's a fantastic man. I had a dentist once and he was like, kill tooth decay with Dr. J. <laughs> Wasn't a great dentist. No, that's not, that's, that's, no, that, the guy was I, doing too much of his own drugs. And he did the dentistry out of his house. That's really bad. And it was, uh, it was my uncle's old dentist and my uncle didn't have good teeth at the time. So. That's, that, that should have told you. I, mean, what, I, was, what a, I was out of college. I had no money. I didn't give, I said, It's yeah. the old AA adage. If you want what we have, oh, you know, it's I like. I could have had infections <laughs> and shit, but go ahead, go ahead. You've never been lucky in those. Tommy areas. Tuck. So not a tummy tuck. So that's 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 it. embarrassing. It's whatever. But I got this massive scar on my body is like completely distorted on one side. So I go see the guy and he looks at me. And first thing he goes, he goes, why are you wearing a fat suit? So I'm mortified. And he goes, dude, you're a good looking boy. He goes, I, he goes, what do you weigh? I said, 200. I lied. I weighed 211. Used to lying. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, 200. He goes, you give me 15 pounds, I'll put that scar in your bikini line. I'm like, okay. He goes, but you got to lose it a certain weight. So what's that? He goes, you got it, zero carbs. And I mean zero carbs. You got a big old plate of belly fat there. It's been there for years. I'm pushing 60. And, you know, I can't work out as hard as I was. I play drums, but I'm not, it's just not going. You'll understand why in a minute. This is what happened. And this is the bizarreness of this whole thing. And he's like, well, drop 15 pounds and call me. I'm like, oh. I said, I'll drop seven and call you. Six days later, I called him. I went, I dropped seven pounds. 
I was mad, dude. I felt embarrassed. I felt belittled. I felt like, you know, I've not been able to lose this weight and, you know, I'm just going to be the kind of- But seven pounds in six days. Yeah, but it was, all I did was just not eat crap. Tom, all Tom, I ate by was the way. protein, this whole, and Jesus. I was like, oh, what is my relationship with food? By the way, Tom Arnold had a book called How I Lost Five Pounds in Six Years. <laughs> I love that Tom. was his book, but go I ahead, go Tom. ahead. I love Tom. So, all right, so there's the embarrassing part that nobody knows about, right? Nobody knows about this stuff. And it's kind of mortifying. Got a tummy tuck, what's wrong? Yeah, so I, know what. I did the work, I'm working out, I'm doing my stuff. I dropped almost 30 pounds before I go into surgery. He goes, dude, and what that does is it loosens up your skin. If you don't eat carbs, you, your skin's going to flop around. And he goes, great, got it, did it, went in, success. Incredible. I mean, look at me. Look way better. Right. But I'd lost the weight well, and I was eating well for the first time in like 10 years. I'm not snacking on garbage. I'm not doing that stuff. And that's all tied to my mental health. That's all tied to my self-esteem. That's all Always. tied. All of that stuff. All that stuff we live with, that's tied to rejection, and it's tied to all the crap that we've talked about millions of times over. Yeah. So they put in drains, which is like basically things to make, because liquid's got to get out and stuff when it's not bonded together yet as a problem, right? So I got these two drains. I'm walking around with these two like donkey testicles on my on my hip filled with fluid. Really embarrassing. And I'm like, I want them out. So we get to the point where I can drive and I can go get the drains out. This is the point. So my mate Dave is going to drive me down to Beverly Hills and go get these drains out. I don't feel good. I don't know what it is. I've been taking Norcos. What do you feel like though? I just, I've got this weird sort of, like, you know, when you take eat something bad, you, you feel like you're going to throw up and you get the water in your mouth and you're like, it's just not, it just don't feel good. It's it's not the stomach. It's in the mouth. It's in the throat. And my, my jaw was hurting on both sides. I don't know what you were doing there. Oh, man. <laughs> this is like heart attack 101. This is heart attack 101. Is that really like it clues is. to Every, it? I thought it was left arm, you know, your chest tightens. No. My jaw is hurting on both sides in the, in the muscles, in the TMJ type muscles. So I'm, I, I looked at my buddy and I was like, no, you got to hold on. I just don't feel good. It was so bad. I'm literally spitting on my kitchen counter going, this is, I'm, I'm not feeling great. And then suddenly, bam, I hit the deck. Hit the deck. I knew I was going down. Did you catch so yourself? I, I kind of caught myself. So I didn't hit anything. I come to, <laughs> on the floor, facing the other direction, ice cold, dripping with sweat. My wife's on the phone, 911. She thinks I've had a drug interaction. She has no idea what's happened. She calls 911 to the people. There's people in my house. I sit up, which will make sense in a minute, which is insane. And I'm like, great, I pissed myself. So I'm like, well, I'm going to need, I'm going to hospital, I guess I'll need some underwear and a pair of sweats and some socks. I crawled my kitchen into, into the pantry because there's people everywhere going, what the hell, you know? The paramedics are there. No, they haven't no. arrived yet. So people are all right. So I've sparked out and I've come to and I'm ice cold and I am not feeling good. So I put on my underwear, I get on the pants, I put one sock on, I'm like, eh, this isn't working. Crawl back out into the kitchen, sit up against the oven. Next thing I know, there's an EMT's face right in front of me. So I've died a second time. Died, so you don't know you died that first well, time. Well, I don't know what the hell's happened. All I know is I'm looking in this guy's face and he's right, anybody, tell us what's happened. And it's the Laurel Canyon Mulholland guys. So it's the almost retired guys who've got like 20, 30 years of experience, each one of them. And this guy's got, he's just paddled me back to life.